So yeah. I'm doing nightclub appearances, getting brand deals. Nothing like this has ever, ever happened to me. But I just thought, that's it. I'm Justin Bieber now. That's <laughs> it. It's going to be like yeah, this forever. Yeah, forever. And then it started to die off. So I had my first vision board in grade 10 in my boarding house. And all the boys used to think I was like, a, like oh, yeah. an idiot. And, and I used to have all these words written on my walls when I was younger. Big, big printouts. I'd go to office work and print it out on my walls. I was originally going to do a booty band business with my mate because we yeah. were in lockdown. I was like, fuck, what can we sell these people? Everyone wants to work out gym was shot yeah. and it made sense but my heart wasn't in it and I started designing a t-shirt to go with the band business and I was just like this is me fuck the bands I'm doing clothes the day yeah. that I left yeah. the Bachelor in Paradise I knew my insights everyone would be watching it was the day I will launch Front Runner it started with 200 pieces but that sold out in like a minute and I said it from the start, I don't care if we're not making any money we just need everyone wearing it my name's Tim Hanley and this is Life, Money and Love Just quickly before we get started, guys, if you've been enjoying the podcast, can I please ask that you consider leaving a five-star review and subscribing on whatever platform you've been listening. It really helps the podcast grow. I remember I did a happy skin collab. Yeah, 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 yeah. We fucking work with a lot of years, man. Yeah. You guys, I'm telling you, I've told people before, you like you guys at the time, all, all the Bachelor in Paradise crew, all the Bachelorette, the Bachelor, like, you guys were the best influencers we've ever worked with, like in terms of like, because well, you were right at the start for us. And this was still when like the people were kind of figuring out influencer marketing. And I say this before, if you, if someone's following an influencer and they just follow them because they post cool shit, that's one thing. But if, if someone's watched you guys on TV for like three, four nights a week for like a month, two months, three months, they feel like they fucking know you, bro. I said that to my missus, I said that to her the other day, I said, oh, we need to start watching reality TV. I don't watch it at all. Mm. Cause I said, I don't think anyone has more influence nah. in the two months than when their yeah. show finishes, there's no influencer stronger not nah, because exactly. i only had 130,000 yeah followers yeah but i was getting 500,000 views that's fucking mental it bro. was fucking gnarly yeah yeah yeah. like and like my insights were just like like to now i get yeah. probably like yeah. ten thousands a good day yeah yeah yeah. like you it's, know it's crazy. I, out of 100 like you start rolling john we'll use this we'll use this as oh well. yeah yeah sick bro let's just start there like let's just use that we never do that but fucking that's sick i want to talk to you bro this is a sick episode for everyone listening um, obviously Tim, everyone would have met him the first time as fucking on a bunch of TV shows, yeah. Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise. And that kind of kickstarted his, his journey to where we get to today, where he's fucking got a sick brand front runner that goes from strength to strength. I love the designs. It's sick to see bro, how far you have grown in. What is it like two years two, now? Just, just, just about popped, two just years. Just over two years. Yeah. We're just talking about kind of the whole influencer space about re reality TV uh, uh, shows. And where I want to start, not where I want to start with you, that there's something you said made me think, fuck, I want to talk to this guy so bad because it's you're so smart and you're so aware and not a lot of people have had this moment. You you had the show, you did the first one, and yeah. then, like, you, you kick off it. Everyone wants to work with you. Like, you're exactly like you said. For those – while you're on the show and those yeah. few months after, you're, like, the hottest piece of property. Everyone yeah. wants to know what you're doing at yeah. all times. And then you ride that and then it the next show comes on and dies. starts to die off, less brand deals, less yeah. appearances. People start to care less. And then you realized, fuck, I don't want to be just another flash in the pen. And you knew you had this other show coming up yeah. and you thought, how can I fucking take advantage of this? How can I make sure I use this attention, this platform I'm going to get yeah. to build something? And obviously this is what it's ended up being. And now you're so much bigger than any of the shows that's ever been on front run. We'll go on and do shit. That's fucking epic. But that little moment that you had in between those two shows where you thought, yeah. let me do something with this is why like, look at what you've been able to build versus like, probably 95% of people that come off the shows and they aren't able to to turn it into anything. Yeah. And not that's the reason where that you go on the shows, but like you said, you just say yes to shit in life yeah. and who knows where it'll take you. Yeah, 100%. So, well, where we'll start both. First of all, thanks for coming in. Yeah, You're no, a legend. No um, I've spent some time researching you, the brand. I'm really a fucking fan now. I've seen you guys popping up over the last like probably 18 months, the last year in particular, but now actually fully looking into the brand. I'm like, this guy's not... This isn't like a fuck around thing to make some money for 12 months. This yeah. is a proper a proper business and a sick brand. So congrats on that. Cheers, mate. Um, look, where we'll start because it's part of the, this part of the journey. I want to know what, the the first time you got approached to go on uh, The Bachelorette, where were you when that happened? It was a pretty yeah. funny moment, right? I was, at, I, was at, I was just at the races. <laughs> yeah. Just at the races, just off my head with all my mates and just some lady came up to me with a clipboard and she goes, yeah. would you consider television? And I, was, I just thought she was G-ing me up. <laughs> and I was like, nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, one of my mates just goes, give her your number, give mm. her your number. Anyway, got a phone call that week 
and um and yeah it was just rolled on from there did one interview yeah first actually first time when they spoke to me they asked me um would I go on another show? Yeah, yeah. Like some new shit show? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm not being the, like, yeah. the test guinea dummy. Pig. Yeah, the guinea pig for yeah. this, like, yeah. new show. It didn't even end up going to air, I don't think. Um, but then they called me again and they said, oh, we love your interviews. Like, mm. would, could you, would you do The Bachelorette? And yeah. I was just like, yeah, fuck. No. Yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah. knows The Bachelorette. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, like, well known. So. What were you doing before before that? No, I was just working construction. Yeah, yeah. I just worked job to job my whole yeah. life. Hey, I never really found my place. Did you did you feel like you ever had like a long term vision just then, or just fucking living in the moment for? Nah, moment? it's weird, but it's weird because like I used to work. I always used to get the grouse jobs. I yeah, always yeah. get the grouse jobs. Underqualified, just yeah. like not good at not just a terrible construction worker. Yeah, yeah. But I would always land the grouse jobs because I was a mad morale booster yeah, on the exactly. job sites, and yeah. like, people wanted me around. <laughs> um, so I, would, I was working on the rail, yeah. making like I was making like five grand a week Fuck. for like just backing trucks in like yeah, this. Like yeah. Mel- Melbourne's the construction, the money in Melbourne at the moment is just mm. crazy in construction. Anyway, I managed to land a gig there, and I was doing like twelve hour. I actually messaged this guy the other night yeah. that I used to work with. Um, I was doing like twelve hour nights on the rail. But I used to always used to journal and yeah. like, and I would always have this like feeling inside my heart. Like I knew I was real grateful to be there because yeah. I was on 120 bucks an hour yeah. at, doing these nights. And I was just like so grateful that that was probably the best thing that could, I could get at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I was just grateful to be there. Um, but I always knew like something was coming. Mm. It was fucking weird. And I, and I would talk to this, there was this one older guy that yeah. I used to work with and he's a bit wise and he's well, yeah. just real great. For conversation, I'd always talk to him like, "I'm I'm gonna do big big yeah, things." Yeah. And like, so anyway, we I'd work these like long nights, ten hours, mm-hmm. twelve hours, and it was just me. I was like manning this gate. Yeah. So it was like no one wanted to do this job because it was so boring and your night yeah. go, your night goes really slow. But I used to love it. It was like a fucking, it was like manifesting on steroids, mm-hmm. having like twelve hours of <laughs> darkness, yeah. just standing there, just waiting around, and all I could do was think. Yeah. And I'm I'm a mad thinker anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'll just sit there and just think about shit and and I'll just like look down these like long, like dark train tunnels and just like be i I'd be so happy. Mm-hmm. It was the shit I like, was freezing yeah. and I'll would, I would just be so happy. I just knew something was coming. It was so weird. I actually was journaling the other morning. Yeah. I hadn't spoken to this guy for like a cu- like probably a couple of years, and I messaged him because like he, his name kept coming up. The guy I used to talk to on the yeah, rail, yeah. and I was journaling, and I was just going through what life is now and where I, where it was. Mm. And I met, I actually messaged him on Instagram. And I said, "Hey man, I just wanted to say thanks for being like yeah. that, like that ear when because I, I would come to him like yeah yeah. I'd get to work. Like and so I'd, much going on. I'd get to work and I just like, like un- unload it. on him, yeah, eh? yeah. like like he was my therapist. Yeah. <laughs> but he would always like he was he was he was great. Um, I actually messaged him the other morning. I said, oh, thanks for being like yeah. that. Like, those, what did he those, say? Those was he like are, those times really good? I knew what kind of guy he was, yeah. so that's why I was fine to send it because he yeah. was like, thanks, man. Yeah, like, he wasn't. He's, he, was, he was like, wow. Yeah. He, was so, he was happy. Yeah, he, yeah. I knew it would have meant something to him too. Exactly. Like, that, that's why I sent it. Like if it, if it, it would have been, yeah, got to pick the pick the crowd. It would have been awkward to send to someone. Yeah. But I just knew that mm. he would appreciate. And it's good that he knows how much it meant to you, and that yeah. you really did value it. And that was like. A, a, a piece of like the puzzle of you becoming who you are today, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, but I just, I just used to know like something, something big's coming. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I always would work jobs like shit jobs, and I would just be so. I'll just love it. I yeah. just knew something was coming. It was fucking so and, weird, hey. And when you're on those job sites, for fucking ten hours, twelve hours, just thinking in your head, manifesting. Did you know at the time, whenever that was, five years ago, six years ago, did you know you were manifesting, or were you just always I, a massive I, thinker? I, I knew I was manifesting. Okay, yeah. I knew I was manifesting in gr- in grade ten. Yeah. The best thing that's ever happened. We went to four different high schools yeah. in five years. Kicked out of schools. The shit's mm-hmm. a student. But my grade ten maths teacher. Yeah. Sat us down and made us watch The Secret. Fuck, in year ten. And, in year ten, and he and he, um, and he used to say, "Don't tell any of the other teachers that I'm showing you this yeah. shit because they're all gonna think I'm crazy." And he used to talk to us about manifestation <sighs> and like um, how all the different things in his life have lined up and how how it is real and and made us watch The Secret and it just opened it up to me. Mm-hmm. And since then, this is before fucking manifestation was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, was yeah. a hashtag on Instagram. 
Bro, I had my first vision board in grade ten in my boarding in my boarding house, and all the boys used to think I was like a like, an, job, like right, an idiot. Yeah. And and I used to have all these words written on my walls when I was younger, like big big printouts. I'd go to office work and print it out on my walls. I'll be manifesting since I was shit and yellow. This is well before it was fucking and like now everyone's like, oh yeah, manifestation and, all the shit. But before then, that's fucking so powerful, bro. Like in, in grade ten, and then, and. I've been doing it, and I've been, I've always had like mm. um, a vision board, and I would always write to myself. I would always write letters to myself, um, like thank you. I like love letters to myself yeah. to be like I love you. Like shit's coming. Like mm. all this and like um, then I'm not like the biggest reader, but um, like read in my early twenties, like read Think and Grow Rich yeah. and just shit, just shit like that. Mm-hmm. And like m- now. I see like manifestation and like like self development has sort of like blown up and it's sort it's it's, it's almost cringy. Like I yeah, would love yeah. to be the guy on there telling everyone about my mm-hmm. like how how my mind works and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I actually pulled up on that because of so many people just thrashing it. Yeah. And I see it and it doesn't look authentic and everyone's just recycling the same lines yeah. about like um yeah, just all they're just all they're just thrashing the top ten books yeah. on man, on um, self development, and everyone's acting like they invented it. And I'm just I was sort of like, mm, I don't want to share it, but it comes so mm-hmm. naturally to me yeah. now. And I I I do it without. You know how people have to say, you know how like, gratitude's a big thing, right? Yeah, yeah. People say, oh, you got to sit down and think about. Um, write down three things you're grateful for. Like, oh, you won't catch me sitting down, mm. like gratitude bends me over when I'm driving, man, like cr- cr- creases me in half yeah. about how fucking, like how grateful I am. Mm. Like gratitude, you got to feel it, mm. you know, like you, you can write it down, but unless you, and it will, like it creases me in half, eh, when I sit and actually feel how much I'm grateful for what's happened to me. It, like mm. it's not, it's more powerful I, I'm the same man and I feel like sometimes when people do these things like I'm, I'm setting aside 15 minutes to write down my, my, my gratitude or I'm setting aside this hour to visualize it becomes this artificial thing when it's these things you really need to feel and just experience in your body bro that's when you get the power of it yeah and talking about your your experience and yeah like I'm I agree there's so many people fucking talking about everything that's why I haven't like man I know so much about ecom I know so much about um, manifestation the power of law of attraction and still even I know the point that I'm at in my life and my career and the su- success I have and I think back like why haven't I actually put out more content, talked about this more. I have a bit but it's because of that as well. And like thrash. It, it, it is thrash but you're the best example at how powerful it is because you're someone like you said, you weren't necessarily the best student. You were fucking getting kicked out of schools, bouncing around. You never really took – I, I had a proper plan, but you always had that core belief yeah. and that core vision. And if you just trusted it, you felt so – And I was the same, bro. You just always know something bigger and better is out there for you yeah. and it allows you to just go with life, bro. And look look what happens. Yeah. Look what happens when you just trust in the process, bro. Trust in the power of that. And, like, some people aren't ready to hear it and I think it's bullshit as well. But, yeah. man, I don't care if you don't do it, but I'm telling you, the power is real, bro. It's, yeah. you, can't, you can't deny it. can't deny it at all. Mm. And it was like that. <clears throat> it, was, it was sort of like that. And – it was it was it was like that when I walked into the first day on the Bachelorette. Mm. It was like I knew I was there for a reason, yeah. and it's like everyone else. I was like, "This is my time. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is me. This yeah, is yeah. this is me." And everyone else was sort of like, mm. Mm. but I knew that like you, walking I, into a new room was just my bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. At that time in my life, yeah. walking into a new room was my bread and butter. Mm. I just ate it up like it was. How did you find the other guys where they a bit fucking a bit shaky? They, and a bit, they were standoffish of me. Yeah. They were standoffish because I went in guns blazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if, yeah. I, if I got kicked out, my edit would have been different because I just just mm. I used to stir, stir all the yeah. all the shit in the house. How, and, how did they like? I, I obviously watched a, a bit because we were working with all of you guys, but I didn't watch the flow of the thing, so I don't know exactly how people were betrayed. How did they do that with you? Were you all I, good because you made it right to the end? Yeah, like, I got the I got the the golden yeah, golden yeah, edit. Yeah. It was it was good. It was. It was a, it was fair, but they they did leave it. They could have they could have stitched me hard. When <laughs> yeah. I, now I know about TV. Mm. I um, like they could have, yeah. Because you just there's so many hours of filming, and every I talk so flippantly, yeah, yeah. And like, 
if they wanted to, they could have made me look twist, like a they can twist they, anything. They can, did you get did you get much did you get any hate coming off the show? Like with any off the sec off the second show okay, second yeah. show I did. Mm. Um did they, they spin they you just, a bit different after just, that one? They just fill you with alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And everyone talks shit when they're pissed, you know? Yeah, yeah, they just yeah, fill yeah. you with alcohol and um like I took responsibility when I watched mm. it back, I was like, mm, that's not me. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, um yeah. And I could see why people blew up in 2022, mm. you know. Um, but um, yeah, that's how the world is now. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. But but um, but it's not. But it's not it, really. Who, it doesn't reflect who you no, actually doesn't, are. Doesn't but someone will take one thing you said and yeah. paint you as picture as yeah. And, you know, and, and, and 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 people like people love to mm. see a winner go down. Yeah. You know, oh. I just came off this other show. I yeah. got the grouse at it. Blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. And they go, that's that's the real him. You show a minute of. Like say a few a few wrong things and yeah. they'll thrash her, but I don't know. I came so out was it your mate Kieran that got yeah. a bit of a fucking shit edit? Like oh. they portrayed him as the bad guy of the season. Now what happened with Kieran, right? Mm. Is I'm probably not even meant to talk about this, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So Kieran, you walk in there, yeah, and they they try to do it to me too. You walk in there and they go, look, mate, you're single, you're 25. Like mm. make sure you test the waters. Don't just settle with one girl. Yeah, and yeah. like Kieran would. Go with one girl, and yeah. then he would go into the producers. And you have full. Me and Kieran got good edits on the last one yeah, from yeah. following what they say to do. Yeah, like yeah. they're in your ear every ten minutes. Off, they'll pull you aside. Yeah, yeah. Tell you this is where we want the storyline mm. going, and um, we trusted them from the first one. Yeah. We, me and Kieran, both got grouse edits on yeah. the first one, so we thought, "Fuck, they're yeah. hooking us up here, <laughs> making us like yeah. if they want us to go with." Five girls. Kieran goes, I'm going with five girls. And that's what they wanted. Yeah. And he thought they were going to help, help him out. So every time he would go with a girl, yeah. they would say to him, no, like there's another girl coming in. Like yeah, there's yeah, heaps yeah, of girls yeah. here. You're only young. And he, and he would go. He's just all for it. And he was just like, yep, yeah, mm. sweet. Mm. And then they cut it up and it was yeah. just him. It would look like he was just b- yeah. brushing every girl and treating them like trash yeah. and blah, blah, blah. He, he like the few, there's a few things he like he wasn't the greatest yeah, but yeah. like fuck they, they like that, 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 mm. someone's gonna someone's gonna die from TV I honestly reckon like just the way well, oh, do, what, what what that's one of the things I wanted to ask like I could and scary I, I, we had Carl it, eh? we had Carlin on ages ago it was one of our first episodes oh yeah and like one of the things I'm most curious about is like obviously you walked in and you're in that that space where you just fucking you're in your own energy and you felt. I can really confident in there, but then that's day one. How does it affect your mental health? Like, does it fuck with your head? You're locked in a house for what, two, three months, no real contact with the outside world. What's going through your head? Does it get fucking tough? Are there tough days in there? Oh, in there, it, 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 it does get yeah. hard. Yeah. Like, I was just like, it was a mental game for me. I just knew I was built for it. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just was. Yeah. I just knew, it, but because yeah, you got no TV, no, mm. no, you can't even read the newspaper, no contact with the outside world. Um. I don't know. It was easy. It was it was hard for me, but it was just yeah. It was you just cool, took it yeah, in stride. Yeah. All right, so you done the first show. All that shit happens. Then did they hit you up? Like how long until you knew you going on the next one? Oh, three days after. I okay. Left so it. You, so you know. And then talk to me about that that period in the middle where you're like you're living the high life, brand deals every day, fucking you could doing appearances at, at, at clubs in yeah. Bali and all this sort yeah. of shit. Then it starts to dry up like it does with everyone that's on a, a, a TV, reality TV show like that. What's going through your head then? And this is kind of where you started to pivot and realize, fuck, I need to build something. I need to do something for myself with this next one. Yeah, so what happened was, so it came off the first one and then yeah, a week later they call you for the second one mm-hmm. and I just kept saying no, mm-hmm. kept saying no until like because I knew that um, – they would want me yeah. real badly for the second one. This <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. Like bad to say, but I just kept saying, like, you saw my heart break, just trying to get more money out. Of <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, but you gotta be smart, eh? Oh, like, bro, you know, sure. I knew the fuck I knew I was holding some serious cards in yeah. my hand because I'd just been mm-hmm. broken hearted on the mm-hmm. first one. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had a fucking the golden ticket. Yeah. Like and so like I'm gonna I've just been in lockdown for the last fucking three months. I'm yeah. not doing it for seven hundred bucks, having another yeah. um you're my heartbroken again, you yeah. Know? Having another um like few months off work, I was like, this has to be worth it for me. Yeah. So I just kept hanging up. Because most people probably I'm just too jump at it, right? Broken hearted, like yeah. all the other boys, they were just keen for more TV. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I was happy. I was, I was mm. done, eh? Yeah. But I was just like, and I, I, I feel like that's why they stitched me on the second, second oh, one. Cause, okay. Because one of the like one of the things was, 
like one of the producers was like, how does this person know how much your contract is? And I was like, I haven't told anyone. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. What, that was when I was leaving. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, so the first one finished. They asked you for the second one. And then, I, and then there's probably like few, a few months before the second one was airing. Okay, and so you filmed pretty much like we, right after as well? We've, we've, oh, no, we filmed. Yeah. And then it didn't air for – for yeah, a while. like a while, yeah. Because it was airing while I was in Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, so he's already on the fucking next show we're when the this one's airing. Uh, well, it's while it's airing, we're already on the next on wow. the next show. I was watching the finale of the first one yeah. from a little laptop in Fiji. Wow, it's wild. Yeah, and so um, but I so I I had been away for half the time that my first one was airing, so I didn't know how much it was blowing up. Until I had to fly. So you, you don't like you're not. You, can you? You don't have your inst- access to your Instagram. Nah, and nothing. Shit when you got no phones or anything. But I, I put in my contract that I have to fly home. Yeah. Middle of mid Fiji. Yeah. For my best best mate's wedding, who's my your business uh, yeah, partner. My yeah. business partner. Oh, so I had to fly home, and that wedding was the day after my finale. So I oh, had my phone oh, there. Yeah, so yeah. I'm mid Fiji here. So um, I fly home, and then um. And then my phone's just blowing up, eh? Yeah, and yeah. then all my, everyone's just going going nuts. I fly into Sydney Airport. There's just yeah. people just rushing me, getting photos. It was just mm. like I've never had anything yeah. like that, eh? All just getting photos. And then I went to the wedding. Even mm. like, even like my mates, misses all their family. They're all getting photos of yeah, me at the wedding, yeah, yeah. sending it to people because my air show just, just aired, just the, aired night before, the final, the Fuck. night before, and then we went. To Couldn't the, have timed it better. And then, and then we went to this pub the night mm. after the wedding, and the whole pub they had to shut like half the pub down because there was just girls just yeah. crying, screaming, scratching. It was fucking gnarly, <laughs> hey. And that went for that went for a, a um for like a few months. So yeah. So what mm. happened was that, that actually I'd filmed them both, right? Yeah, yeah. So the first shows filmed. Second show's uh, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm copying all the um, – I'm getting it all from the first show. So yeah, I'm doing yeah. nightclub appearances, getting brand deals. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Yeah. So I didn't really know how to navigate it. But yeah. I just thought, that's it. I'm Justin Bieber now. That's <laughs> it. It's going to be like yeah, this forever. Yeah, forever. Like I'm famous. That's mm. how – that's honestly how mm. I thought, fuck, I'm the man. Yeah. And and then it went for a couple of months. I'd go out. Everywhere was like like crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it started to die off, and I, and this is before the second show aired, mm. and the second show got pushed back like another six months. So I, I'd had heaps, I'd had heaps of time, and so, but in in that time, I realized I just watched the brand deals start going down, my insights on my Insta start going down. I was like, mm. and then I was like, this next show will give me a little bump back up, but then I realized it goes back down goes again. Down, yeah. You do, you're only hot for five minutes. You're not Justin Bieber. You're just on a fucking little reality show. And what um, did that do? You seem like a, a really confident person, but even for you, did it knock your ego around a bit or? Nah, it, nah it just like kicked me in you're the just gear. Like, that's it what kicked it is. me in yeah, the yeah, gear. Yeah, yeah. I just realized like, like yeah, there, there's your fun. Yeah. But And then I, I was like, I was thinking like you can, because I, I, I was making heaps of money, hey. Like, mm. Oh, you would, yeah. Like off for – that little period for that little because like you're getting a couple grand per thing and you can do a yeah. few a week if you want right? yeah if, yeah a few grand up to like yeah nightclubs three a weekend five grand a club just bang 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 yeah wow flying from bali to darwin darwin to gold coast mm. and that was it was just wild and it's like that and then it's everyone's there to fucking see you so it's yeah. fucking just yeah the whole up. line is just screaming yeah, it's yeah. just pretty it's pretty wild yeah, yeah. it was like it, it was oh, it just it just rewired my whole brain after yeah. I, after i sat back and Thought about it all, yeah. Um, and and then in in between that period of, of I was like, "Fuck, this next show is going to air. Mm. I've got to do something with it. Mm. Like, I need to actually make it last. Yeah. So I need to try and do something. So that's when I started thinking about businesses. We went into lockdown straight away in March. The show was airing in like um, July, June, yeah, like July. Four or five months, yeah, four yeah. or five months. So I just started fucking just. Staying up to like two, two in the morning, just like studying, studying, studying. I was originally going to do a booty band business with my mate because we yeah. were in lockdown. I was like, "Fuck, what can we sell these people?" Like everyone's at home, everyone wants to work out. Gyms were shut. Yeah. And it made sense, but my heart wasn't in it. And then I started yeah. designing a t-shirt. My mate was a PT. We were going to do it with him. Yeah. And I started designing a t-shirt to go with the band business. And I was just like, "This is me." Yeah. Fuck the bands. I'm doing clothes. Wow. And then um. 
I was just I, – once I started, I just couldn't stop. It was the late nights, like just to – just asking so many questions, and I had, and, and I also knew, timed up. It worked out perfectly because I also knew that I would never get this much time again. Yeah. One, I had an opportunity coming with the show. Yeah. But I had this like perfect amount of time where no one's doing anything, and I knew I can either go into this lockdown, um, like, and just waste and waste the yeah. time, or or make the time. But I, or I also knew I was do, I was working on this business. Because I know, know from the past that too much time has just been really bad for me. Mm. Because I used to just get on a go on a bender. Yeah. Eh? And Melbourne was, lockdown was fucked, like brutal, right? Yeah. Months of like you could barely leave your house. Months, and I and I knew that if I don't put my mind to something, I will seriously have yeah. a twelve week bender. Mm. If I and were you living with? Were you already with your missus I, at that point? Nah, I started seeing her probably like just as I started. Probably a couple of months into it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we were together before. Yeah. And now talk to me about something we were talking about. I don't know if we fucking recorded it, but we are talking about uh, the, the book Rocket Fuel and like the two like key ingredients to starting a partnership with the business. Now, something you did from the start was you knew that you wanted to partner with your, your mate. Tell me about the decision for that and how fucking important it actually was. Oh, with my my, my mate Jai. Yeah. He, um, so Jai, Jai is um, one of the other owners, but just me, Jai and mm -hmm. Bree. Mm-hmm. And um, he's he's my best mate. He's the one who I flew home for for his wedding. Yeah. Um, and he he's just a business genius. He's got a hundred employees in his other construction business. Just loves business, lives and breathes it. At the start, when I was starting it, I was just I was just going to his house once a week. Yeah. And he was just giving me little lessons on um on business. And then um, because. He's seen me start like a hundred things and never yeah. even never, never So what was what them. were you talking about with him? Like structures, setups, just structure, initial just like full basic yeah. how to fucking what an ABN is. Yeah, just like yeah. just the most because you you weren't at all in the business mindset before nah, then, right? No, yeah. no idea about anything. Mm -hmm. And um and so it was just the very basic, say hey, not didn't even know what a PL was, yeah. like not like nothing like that. Oh bro, most people don't. Yeah, thing. I was actually doing. I, I spoke at my uh, my old high school last week, no, yeah. this week, and I went to a public school, like pretty like lower middle class area. A lot of really like kids that have never been exposed to any business or any like cool shit going on TV shows. Yeah, and like it's like so many of us don't realize what's possible. You didn't know about any of this stuff until you start. Yeah, and you realize fuck, bro, the world really is your oyster. Yeah, you know what I mean. 100%. If you can if you can grab opportunities or identify an opportunity like lockdown, you got all this time. I can either watch Netflix and get pissed all day yeah. or I can build something to, you know, get myself through it one and then launch my life after this next little bump. Yeah. Just that rewiring that mindset shift of looking at time and opportunities for like what, what the positive can be rather than just, you know, I just was, the negatives. And you sort of got to be a little bit naive too. Hey. Oh yeah. Cause like <laughs> when, I, you start. I, when I started, I just thought I, I actually never, ever, it, it never crossed my mind that it wouldn't work. Yeah. I honestly mm -hmm. it never crossed my mind. It wouldn't work. Mm. Like from the moment I got the first like piece of clothing that I I just knew like yeah because I had I I'm because I'm so tall and mm. um I just have always been so specific with like what I buy and yeah. stuff and I was just like you can't buy this shit anywhere yeah I, always, yeah. I just knew like I'm making it specific custom tailored yeah. to me yeah and hope everyone else <laughs> buys it and I, I just knew there was the market yeah, for, yeah. for what I was doing like no one was doing a mock neck when mm. we started our mm. tees. Everyone's doing them now, but two years ago, no mock necks anywhere. Yeah, yeah. and um, like oversize was just coming in. Because you, 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 I know you've you've brought on a designer more recently, but did you do all the designs? Like you come no, up with the I designs. Had a, I had and a, stuff? I had a designer from the okay. Pretty. I oh, had the first the first like two collections. Yeah. No, I've had I've had someone with me pretty much the whole time. So you come like kind of the idea and say, okay, yeah, turn bring this the, into it. Yeah, bring design. the idea and yeah. that and. Um, this, we sort of create a story behind it, mm -hmm. create colors, and then we, we work together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she's been with us pretty much the whole time. And that knowing, not, not, and this is what I talk about. There's a difference between knowing and believing. Like some people say, oh, I believe my business is going to be successful. But I believe if you say the word believe, it's like you're kind of still hopeful and yeah. like, you know, but you like, you knew like it was just going to be successful. Yeah. And that's tied to all this fucking time you've spent manifesting and just sitting in this feeling of fuck, epic shit's coming for me. And it's such a fucking amazingly powerful place to work from. Yeah, it's grouse. Mm, mm. Um, 
So what was I saying just before? Fuck, I don't know. But I wanted to ask you, okay, you get the idea, you're working with your mate. Where do you start? What do you do? You, you find manufacturers, Alibaba, you go Bali manufacturers. Yeah, where do you, where yeah, do you go? Yeah. Started, start, I started on Alibaba. Yeah, yeah. Just started with like 10 different manufacturers mm -hmm. and then got the same piece of clothing made by all of them. Because I it was have, like a t shirt the like, first thing you did uh, or a hoodie uh, or. Uh, 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 hoodie, yeah, yeah, hoodie, and, but I had no idea about what anything should cost, so yeah. I never knew if I, if I went with one manufacturer, I never, I didn't, I didn't know if I was getting ripped off. Mm -hmm. So I had to create the same product and get an idea of what a cost would yeah, be. Smart. So I had to create the same product, heaps of different suppliers, mm -hmm. and then I had to look at what how the communication was. Yep. So I, this was I was just winging it, eh? Yeah, and yeah. then I had to look at quality. And then pretty much add all those up and then go with a couple of different manufacturers. And yeah, so what was, what was the key decisions you made your choice? Because a lot of people here that listen will be into like starting their own e-com brand. Now, yeah. e-com can be fashion, can be beauty, can be fucking whatever. But like what were the main things? So there was pricing, obviously. Yeah. There was the communication, pricing, the quality of the products. Communication and quality. That yeah. was pretty much the main yeah. three things I was looking for. Yeah. And now. <laughs> because the guy, the, the, the original one supplier. Yeah. I've spoken to him every single day. For probably more than I've spoken to anyone else in the world, <laughs> like besides my missus, yeah. I've spoken to him every single day for, really? for the last two and years. And does he still manufacture some stuff yeah, for you? Still does it, yeah. Wow. And but, but he was like, but I would get photos of shit and like hold it up. Yeah. And say, Can you do this? Like sticky taped. Mm -hmm. This is before like my designer was doing actual yeah. tech packs. So I was like, had like. Logos that mm -hmm. I printed out mm -hmm. from Canva, mm -hmm. printed out, sticky taped them to my t shirt, yeah. and then like send him a photo and like, this is the placement. Yeah. That I yeah want. Like, yeah. this is where it needs to be. Yeah. But, bro, that's what you got to do. If you're not fucking like just that. figure it out, bro, find a way to do it, bro. It doesn't, it doesn't fucking have to be perfect when you're starting. And that's what you said. You had no, you know, really idea what you're doing, but you just did it step by step and fucking it didn't take you. Some people, it does, and you need to have the patience if it takes several years to even get somewhere. But like, bro, you just started and step by step, like once you start actually doing this, doing the stuff and yeah. actually trying to do shit, it can figure itself out really quickly, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. And then as we started to get bigger, um, well, Brie was always with me from the start. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have even been mm -hmm. able to get it off the ground without her because she's such an integrator. Like I don't, yeah. I, there's not one bit of paperwork that I've filled out. Eh? She's <laughs> yeah. just like all over it. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I just got the big ideas. I yeah. know where we're going and she sort of just makes it happen. Yeah. Eh? You need that. You and, need then, that. And, and then we've got Jai, who's the business structure. It's just, I think that having a team, like we've got a good team now between like design, marketing, yeah. finance, um, all the different sort of pillars that you need for business. We've got like a really good team that should take us to, um, should bring, take us to the next couple of years. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about the growth journey. What was how big was your first order? How many orders, uh, uh, units did you order for that first batch compared to what you guys do now? So I had four. Um, so we had four pieces. Yeah. Two hoodies, two sweatshirts. Yeah. And they had only had they had fifty each. Yeah. So yeah. we started with two hundred pieces, but that sold out in like a minute. <laughs> Like two minutes because yeah. I was fresh off TV yeah. and everyone was watching my shit. Did you make that? Did you have the, everything ready to launch by the time it was on TV again? Yeah, the, the day I walked out of the Bachelor in Paradise, so the day yeah. that I left yeah. the Bachelor in Paradise, I knew my insights. Everyone would be watching. Peaking. Was the day I will launch Front Runner. <sighs> That's like so the, the, smart. The, the, the day after. That's so, so like, smart. And everyone was watching my shit at the same mm. time. So at the same time, like the build up was coming. I was all on, on the ads. And everyone was like sort of watching. That's when I started the front runner Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, something's coming. Teasing something's it. coming. Yeah. Something's coming. Just posting all these yeah, like retro yeah. photos and just like yeah. shit like that. A bit of the process of what I'm doing. Yeah. And people were interested because they were just watching what I was doing. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just launched it that day. And yeah, 50, we did 50 of each, but then we restocked it, like 100 of each. So I did about, um, we would have done. Did you place the order as soon as you sold out? As like soon as we sold order? out, yeah. yeah. As and soon then as did you air freight them over? Air freight it. Yeah, we, you we can't air, wait, bro. We air, freighted, we air freighted everything for the first year. Yeah. For the first year, didn't make fuck all money yeah, because it yeah. was air freighted because it yeah. cost it cost nearly ten bucks extra to. Sh oh, because you launched in fucking like like still the fucking COVID bullshit. Yeah, like with we, freight freight's gone up when i started the business four or five years ago five to ten times anywhere in there for air freight like yeah. it's starting to level off but yeah it, bro, it's you're just, in the really expensive time it, to be starting a business with air freight and it's yeah but but the plan was and i said it from the start i don't care if we're not making any money yeah we just need everyone wearing it 
So the quicker we can get it, if we yeah. did, if we want restocked, we need more people wearing it. So we kept just kept restocking, restocking. But yeah, now some of the teas that we've like done, we we um of one style, we've done nearly like eight hundred of some. Wow, just one style, yeah, like one tea, yeah. Um, that's with restocks. But our our main orders, we usually sit around two, yeah, two three hundred, and our. Talk, talk to me about your commitment and like I seems like, I don't know if it's you're the you're kind of the um the driver of this within the business from from the research I've done but tell me about why you're uh like you're so focused on the product and the quality of the product rather than margins and this yeah. and that talk to me about your product focus and why that why you feel like it's so important I feel like when your product's good your product like sells itself mm. eh? Like your marketing can be there. You can your marketing can do whatever it wants, but I don't think if you don't have a good product, it's not really like our. We have full groups of friends like wearing our shit because yeah. they all tell each other about it. I just think word yeah. of, word of mouth is still so underrated. Yeah, and that's what you get when you got a good product. Yeah, um, because you have a ridiculous returning customer rate, right? Our returning customer rate's so high; yeah. it's like sixty, seventy percent every Mental. month. So Mental. we got people that are just buying and buying and buying, yeah. buying everything. Um, but it's, so you didn't have to spend that much money on on like paid ads in the first year. A lot of it was organic to start. We didn't do any ads in the first year. I don't think we didn't do any ads. So it was all organic was all through organic. word of mouth, through yeah. social people sharing. Yeah, it was all organic. But I, and I have, but I'm lucky from going on the TV shows and that I had good, um, good influencer contacts. Yeah, that yeah. would have cost me probably a hundred thousand dollars in what I yeah, yeah. in the post that I did get off, yeah. off people. But you know what? It's one thing to send an influencer something and it's another thing for them to be wearing it every day. Yeah, yeah, so big like, difference, right? I've been sent a heap of clothes and yeah. stuff like that and you get it, you do your deliverables and yeah. see you later. Yeah. They go in the cupboard, they're probably never worn again Yeah, if it's like paid or whatever. Yeah. If I, I send stuff to like these high-profile football players yeah. that can't really post because like – They got their rules. Like Cameron, yeah. Cameron Munster, he yeah. – he can't post because he's with Puma and stuff like that. Mm. But he's just where he wears it on all the TV shows. Jerome Luai, yeah. all the top like NRL, uh, all yeah, the top yeah. NRL players. And it's not like they're choosing. They're going to their wardrobe yeah. and they're picking my oh, shirt. That says something more. Do you than know what I mean? It's, lab, it's, right? it's it's better than anything. Yeah. If I see it without them posting, I'm just like, fuck it's, yeah, he's wearing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's wearing it like after the grand final stuff like that. That's just like, and that's when you know your product's good. Has, has there been anyone that like, obviously you've, you've already, you've fucking would have met so many fucking awesome people and shit from what you've done. But is there anyone that stands out like Cameron Munster for me, I'm a big footy fan as well. I was like fucking yep. pretty mental. Is there any, anyone that you've seen wearing your stuff that was like, that's a bit of a pinch me moment. Like that's fucking cool. Nah. Oh yeah. Sort of just, sort of just all, yeah. all those boys, mm, mm. all those boys. And when did you start actually doing your paid ads and stuff? Um, we have we've never paid an influencer. Yeah, but we do. Um, we do have a we do have a yeah. marketing team. Because who that, who brought brought that into the business? Is that Jai or Jai, is that, Jai, would, is that Jai, Jai, Jai brings it all. Yeah, Jai, every stru- bit of structure mm. that um, our business has comes yeah. from Jai. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a couple more things about the business and then I want to go into your own personal like metamorphosis that you've gone through. Uh, but with the business, bro, like now that you're planning and scaling and trying to take it to the next level, yep. how far do you have to plan ahead? Like how far are your collections ahead now? Six. Oh, we're planning at the moment like April next year. Yeah, yeah. April next year. So, you, so it has you, to be six, six, six months ahead. And what's the process for you from idea and then to launch? Like how does it work? So idea – Storyboard, yep. mood board, mm-hmm. um, shapes. So yeah. pick what, what do you want? A hood, you want? In this collection, you want a hoodie, yep. crew neck, um, yep. two tees, a hat, mm-hmm. some shorts. Shapes, they're your shapes. Mm-hmm. Then you pick colorways, tr- test out a few different colorways. Good thing about us is like, so there's a there's a trend book, right? right? Yeah. My designer gave it to me. There's a trend book that you can get that will cut, that has all the upcoming trends and colors. Mm-hmm. For, for 2023, yeah. she gave it to me. I was just like, put that back in your cupboard. <laughs> we don't need that. Because when you see a trending colour, you go into General Pants, Universal, every store is running the same colours in that season. So mm-hmm. forget that. That's uh, that's also why I think we've done well because we haven't followed any trends. We're just sort of doing what we like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we go we go to, yeah, colourways and then sample. Yeah. Uh, at the start, it was a lot harder because when you're developing new shapes, yeah. um, 
it's just the fits and stuff like that. They they take a few few t- yeah. like, turns to get go, a um, few goes to get right. Yeah. Um, but when we have our tea, yeah. it's just about getting it. getting. And it. how did you come up with that at the start? You didn't have like fashion experience, did you? Like how did you fucking figure out these shapes? And Oh, man. Would it a lot of trial uh, and error? Th- yeah, just a, just a lot of um, – like I just had a measuring tape at home yeah. in COVID yeah. and I would have yeah. a tea and I would be like – Couple inches onto the sleeves, mm. couple inches on yeah. longer. Yeah, yeah. It's just you got to figure it out like real that. Basics, eh? Yeah, it and was then, just co- it was just common sense. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a lot of it was just common sense. But people let these things because oh, I don't know exactly how to do that. Let them stop them starting, bro. That's the thing. Yeah, it's pe- these things that people don't know the exact or proper way to do it. I'm sure now you have a proper spent process. Thousands, but, spent thousands mm. of dollars, probably ten thousand mm. dollars before I got the first hoodies and. Yeah, it's ten thousand dollars on sampling. Yeah, wow. Just on, I had a, I had hundreds of like now probably nearly a hundred of just because I couldn't. How I learn about fabrics yeah. is by going into the shops and feeling the fabrics, and then you check the inside of the um the the tag, the tag and it tells you the fabric content of your yeah. of your um yeah of whatever it is. So now I just go around and if I'm look if I like a fabric I just yeah. go and suss it out and yeah. see what sort of fabric content it is. Yeah. In COVID I couldn't go to any shops so I had to order everything in to learn about fabrics. Yeah. So I, I if I wanted to so like say I wanted a hoodie that was sixty percent cotton, forty percent polyester, mm. I would have to go online look on as many websites as I could to find a sh- jumper that says forty percent like says that yeah, exact that, breakdown, that breakdown, order it, and yeah. then see what it's like. It yeah, was fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing I want to ask about business, man, like there's a very common misconception, particularly from the outside looking in when people haven't started a business themselves and then even more so a business like yours, killing it and growing, but like they think that automatically means you're banking heaps of profit from day one. No. But business is hard and like growing a business is one thing, but being able to profit at the same time is very difficult. And something I, I'd like to – people to hear your story about one of the fucking sickest up and coming brands in Australia and you didn't take a wage for the whole first year. No, nah, we didn't take a wage. No, I was on Centrelink. Eh? Mm. No mm. law. I was just on Centrelink. Yeah. I, was cop- I was still copping a few brand deals and stuff like yeah, that, which, yeah. was, which um, was lucky, but I was just on the COVID payments, mm. eh? the 750. And, and of the, those are the good old days. And why, and what made you think that was that something that you just felt like I want to put all the money back in to grow it? Was it dry saying this is what we should do? How did you? No, nah, I just did, we just didn't have the money yeah. to, to to do it. Yeah. Every cent we needed to was to buy more stock. Mm. Like, yeah, but it was same same with me. Yeah. Same with me and George at the start. Um, we took us six months. We actually went a little bit different. Like we started making profit a little bit earlier because the nature of our product, yep. obviously higher margins, beauty tech. Yep. But we didn't pay ourselves. We were paying ourselves like 500 bucks a week, yeah. like just to get through. And like we didn't catch up on stock. Like we were behind. We were selling pre-sale for like the first six months because we'd get all the money and then as much money as we could afford, we'd buy more stock. We'd sell it out. We'd have yeah. to buy more stock. And it's just fucking part of it. But so many people, I bet you would see uh, in the first year if I can – looks from the outside killing it and just because you're selling a lot of t-shirts and hoodies doesn't mean you're fucking necessarily making bank making bank no nah, mm. not at all and, and, and even even your revenue your revenue doesn't mean that you're profiting oh not at all heaps, no. you know what i mean a, a book i know you've read as well and i have too and it kind of really uh changed the way i looked at business and i want to know if it was an influence on you at all but uh shoe dog phil knight's book shoe dog i've read it like three times crazy though. huh it's just like and I'm not a I'm not a big reader. Yeah. But at the time when I was doing this, it was just like glue for, yeah. for me because he it was everything that I, I was doing. Yeah. And, but it was so good to read at the start because it just made all my problems look so small because I was yeah. just reading it and just like mind blown. Hey, just doing it with no I internet couldn't believe and it, man. just like crazy. And I just made and just just the money problems he had mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It, just, it sort of prepared me for it. Like there's so many times, like if anyone doesn't know the story of Nike, like they didn't make profit for like the first 10, 20 years really. Yeah. Like there's so many things that happened yeah. reading that book and I'm like, okay, this is the end. Like so, ev- so everyone would have, like so many people would have given up with all these problems, but somehow we just find a way to keep on grinding, yeah. keep on grinding and then Nike is now fucking what it is, you know? Yeah, it's wild. Mm. Now talking about those problems, what have been some of your biggest problems that you've had to overcome in business or biggest challenges? So the biggest prob biggest problems cash flow. Yeah. 
in the, in a business like like ours because we sit on like nearly like between us getting the clothes and selling the clothes is near there's like probably four four months mm. and we now have to we at the start like we had a we had a mad we had a mad um, deal where we would pay for it when it when it lands in like Australia. Like actually hits Australia, yeah. okay. So that that helps and, a lot. And, and their their payment terms that that you can get. So so we had to sort of pivot for new supplies and stuff like that to try and and that was a like a hard time. Yeah, and you got one supplier and you start looking for new. And ones. have you ever had to? Um, how do you go? Like, have you ever had to let go of anyone? Any staff? Like staff, I had to fire anyone. Or oh, anyone. nah, just some warehouse, just some yeah. warehouse people. Not really, we didn't really fire them. They just came on like yeah. casually yeah. and they just weren't the right fit for us. But yeah. now we've got a gun, a little warehouse team. Yeah, yeah. Um, just little stuff like that. But yeah, just managing cash flow is probably the yeah. hardest thing Yeah. in a business like ours, but it's all right. Yeah. And what about working with uh, Brianna? Is how how is that like mixing like your 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 partner in life with your partner in business? No, nah, we're just we're we're a dream team eh, together. <laughs> yeah. Like ever since, like we had because we were together for a long time. Yeah. Before we were together for like eight mm. years before the bachelor. Oh, okay. And so then she we was like your OG girl. Yeah, and then we broke up. Yeah. And like it was probably only like probably a couple months after when I w- was approached at the races after we broke up. Yeah. And it was sort of like oh, I'll get fuck. this. Like, this will get her, like you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that was one of the motivating <laughs> factors. Fuck, eh? I'm winning the breakup. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, we go. yeah. <laughs> that was one of the motivating factors, eh? Because you always want to win the breakup, but yeah. fuck. but that's probably what got her back to. I always say that to her. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you only came back because so I went on TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can, you're, you're lucky. You kind of got the your cake and eat it too, right? Yeah. You kind of got to experience all of it. And um. But yeah, we're 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 good to get. We both mm. know our roles. That's the mm. thing. She doesn't. She wouldn't want to do anything that I do, yeah. and I wouldn't want to do anything that she does. Yeah. And there's no like, we don't even really go into each other's lanes. Yeah, you like, just trust each other. We to just do. do their own yeah, thing, yeah, everyone's. We just do it. We 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 have completely. Mm. Only sometimes we're like we work together, but that's yeah. just because A the whole business. Time, yeah. Time comes together. What about like obviously business is fucking grueling mentally at, at times, and I know you're a big thinker. You seem like someone with fucking a lot of energy and a lot of passion. But how? Do, what, what are some things you do to like keep your mental health like fucking sharp? Because it, like if you're gonna execute, and particularly when you have to be creative, it's fucking really hard to do that if you're not in a good flow, right? Yeah. Can I just say one thing first? I was just um saying that you said how it is with Bree and Jai. Yeah. And I just think. People say like, oh, you shouldn't really go into business with people. Yeah. But Jai explained it to me once and and it just made so much sense that like having a business partner is probably the best thing that has ever happened Mm. to us because there's so many times you want to just cry and you can call someone and Mm. and, and unload on them because if you just call your mum or your mates or whatever, they don't give a fuck about your business. Do you know what I mean? But like – if you have someone to share those lows with, it makes it not so bad. But also for the high fives as well. No one yeah. cares when you have a, a, a drop, that a record drop. Mm. You can't ring your mates and say, yeah. we just made this much money. Like, they go, hey, what cool, the fuck? Sick, You're just bragging. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you need someone that you can call and be like, we just did this. Like, fuck yeah. And you need someone to be like, like, today it's not, not the best day yeah. today, you know? Bro, I'm with you one million percent. Yeah. I, I, I never want to start, like, obviously I'm happy, happy skin girl. I told you before, I started with a mate and we, we did that together for the first year. Now it's been like probably close to three and a half, four years since he left. And while it's sick, yeah, you get all the glory yourself, yeah. but fuck that, bro. I will never start a business again that I don't at least have minority partners like involved yeah. in the business. It's so much better for the highs and the lows, man. Oh, like, well, we speak every day. Me yeah. and Bree obviously speak, but like I call Joe jo- yeah. jo- probably 10 times a day yeah, yeah. and just be like, What's happening here? Yeah. What, like, and it, it's just always someone to to bounce off. I, I wouldn't. I don't know what I would have done if I yeah. didn't have a like a business partner to share that with. And what what people also say is don't start businesses with your friends or loved ones as well. And yeah, I fucking the best highs I've made for Happy Skin Co and bringing people in. And like even these guys here for the podcast and I'm doing some other stuff with these boys. Like, bro, I only want to do businesses with friends. Yeah, 100%. Like, fuck that. That's Why what, not, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I, I don't think – you should steer away from it at all. I've tried to – well, I've not tried – like I was in the process of building uh, two other businesses uh, in the past, like in the last couple of years yeah. with people that weren't friends. 
and I fucking hated every second yeah. of the process. So, bro, it never ended up happening, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I couldn't be more of an advocate for for, for doing – like for starting a business with a partner. But then if you're going to do it with a friend, you just need to be honest with each other and you need yeah. to respect each other and yeah. communication is important. But I think it'll be the most fun, bro. Like like you said, like because you can't really – like can't really call someone that doesn't have a business or doesn't necessarily have a lot of money. Like it's not, you're not calling them the brag, but you, you don't, you feel like you can't call like, you bro, we just did X we, amount of money this month. Like fucking house six that, but yeah, so you, you can't, just sit you, with it yourself. You like, yeah. That's what I mean. You can't call yeah. someone like I'm banging on the table. Calling <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah. we do a good, yeah. good week or like our drop goes, yeah. goes wild. Cause like, bro, one of the most stressful days ever is just, drop day for me yeah because i put like it's it, it's russian roulette every yeah. time it's yeah. a new drop some people might not like it yeah you know, like i think it's good yeah but like i'm always like fuck yeah. like we just put that linen out yeah. we just did this new linen and it's a new yeah. st- new shape new style and i was like fuck mm. i was so confident in it mm. but i um because i because yeah, i loved different. it so much mm. but i was like oh you still you still never know but yeah. it's sold out so yeah. like well bro, i saw that on your site as well and i'm like fuck that's different i hadn't yeah. seen anything like that on your site before so i'm like fuck yeah taking the like taking the steps out of necessarily what's comfortable is, yeah. is a big thing but i remember me and george bro we, we with the day we launched uh i was like 11 o'clock um i was in, in just about to go to bed we got our first sale. One sale, bro. I fucking jumped out of bed, went over his house, cracked a bottle of champagne. It's like those little things, having those moments to fucking celebrate with people that are along the journey with you. And then there would have been times where like you're not feeling it. You kind of want to give up. Not give up as in give up the business, but like I just can't deal with this problem anymore. Yeah. And then like you keep each, you, you motivate each other. Yeah. One day you'll be feeling shit. They'll be feeling good. Yeah. They get you through it and, and yeah, vice versa. Yeah, 100%. That's how it is. Yeah. And bro, you know what we're talking about all the influencers that we work with from um, Bachelor in Paradise. Our first influencer we ever wor- we were ever worked with was uh, Davey Lloyd. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, and then we that started, we worked with Jake and Megan and then obviously a lot of the other se- like seasons yeah. and all, like a lot of years we work with obviously. Um, but bro, our f- total investment for the business was 10 grand each. So yeah. 20 grand. And we made the night Davey posted and it was just for free, uh, just for the product for him. He, he made us like seven and a half grand and we were like slipping out, bro. Like mental. Yeah. That's no, mm. yeah, I, th- I don't know if influencers have that. Not the same anymore, It's bro. not the same, eh? No. Nah. I think Australian influencers, wish everyone's like, they're like thrashed, eh? Well, that's the thing, yeah. Everyone yeah. pumped them so yeah, hard. Crashed. I tell you what, it is, bro. Like, uh, I swear there's only there's only a small circle of. Them. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's too too many. The, and, the, and the good ones are like, oh, 10 grand a post yeah. and shit. You're like, you're just not going to get ROI, yeah. like you used to. But I tell you what, does work. And it's probably different for fashion. It's more about like the style and who their followers are. But man, what we've realized for our business micro. is like micro influence is massive, and but content creators, not just. Posting, po- post like posing for a photo with the handset anymore. Yeah, there's nothing like it needs to be an content. entertaining, engaging piece of content. Hundred. It's not just fucking. Hundred. That's why yeah. our best influencer. His name's Jeff T- Taufa. Yeah. I can't Jeff Tafua. <laughs> um, but he's a Samoan guy. Yeah. He walked in our um catwalk. We had all models, and then we had him, and he's just so charismatic. <laughs> That's sick. And um, in our first runway show, yeah, did last year. How'd that go? I was fucking Fun? wild. Yeah. Man. Stressful, but it was it was cool. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, but yeah, he's our best influencer because he's got he's only got fifty thousand followers mm. or whatever, but they're so engaged. Yeah, that's what it's because about. Because he's funny and like, like yeah. He just it like like anything like when there wasn't a lot of people being influencers creating content, it was easy. But now that there's so many, like to really have the cut through and really have the people wanting to give you their time every day by following what you're doing. You need to be really good, bro. Yeah. So that's my Insta's fucked. Like I never post on my Insta. Mm, it like, t- takes time, bro. Right, it's because it's because, big investment of time. Yeah. I should do it more, but I just don't, I just, I'm just like, my life's not that interesting. I don't think. Well, you don't think, but I guarantee people watching it would think. Yeah. But you is. know, and you, but you know what else? I, I used to want to share everything that I was doing in the process too yeah. of designing and stuff like that. Yeah. But now I'm just like, I don't want to show anyone because I know people are watching yeah. and the fashion's like that. Yeah. And if yeah, I yeah. show you what I'm designing mm. for the next six months, That'll you've got six up. months to be like, mm, yeah, those colors work or like, yeah. um, it's sort of it's you got to keep your cards close yeah. to your chest. Do you follow like Don? Do you know Don from Stacks? Nah. Don and Tim. Oh like yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, some yeah. Stuff I know, as I know. well, but like, fuck yeah. yeah. R- risky in fashion, bro. People are gonna come after you I, so I quick, know. man. Exactly. They've done well. Yeah. They oh fucking, they've they've killed it. Um, How long have they been in business? 
ages, bro. I'm pretty sure he launched like seven, eight years ago. Yeah, right. But it was like very slow. slow. It was like really the last – I saw him. You know I saw him? I met him at uh, – they invited uh, like a bunch of people to like, what was it? It was a celebrity apprentice thing. And they invited a bunch of um, like business owners there. That was probably like, it was in the COVID time. Everyone's fucking wearing masks and standing apart from each other and shit. Um, and we met them there. And that was probably like two and like two and a half years ago. And that was just when they were starting to really pop off. And then the last two years they've just been fucking, yeah, right. but it's like eight years in the game, bro. And people yeah. don't see the, 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 the hours you need to put in to get there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, where I want to go with this now, it's all, we, we've been gone for a while. I want to talk about your personal transformation. What do I do? Talk to me about like how different the Tim is today than the Tim fucking before you started oh, this two journey. Years ago, yeah, even two years ago. Not even recognizable, eh? Yeah. Like not, not even oh, – what you know, the best thing I ever did was give up drinking. Yeah. Because like I, drinking wasn't a bad thing for me. I just used to love drugs. Yeah. Not, not like – Hectic drug, but I just yeah. have to get on the bag Party every weekend. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. weekend yeah. without like um without fail. And like if you stop but I'd never you'd never get on the bag when you're fucking sober. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if I stopped drinking, everything else stopped. And then I once I went a year, you know they talk about breaking habits. Mm -hmm. I went a year and I just never went back to it. Mm. Like I I'll I'll get on the piss and stuff yeah. now. Like once every three, four months or yep. whatever, whenever I see my real close mm -hmm. friends, I'll get on the piss, but I'll never ever feel like I'm missing out. But when I, I said to my, um, said to Bree the other day, like I have no idea how I broke that cycle because I was yeah. so addicted to partying. Like you're a big and, party, all right? And like yeah. being on the scene, hey, in Melbourne, like I used to, I used to, I used to go out clubbing by myself. Yeah. Before and anyone knew me, and before yeah. anyone knew, I used to go out by myself, one out. And just 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 Rage. thrive and love it. Yeah. And I used to think when I was there, I remember thinking so clearly when I was there, like, how the fuck am I ever gonna stop this? This is yeah. so yeah, fun. Yeah. Like, when when did the, you have that period that you took that year off? Like, that, was it when I start, the, the when I started, started the business? Yeah. I was like, because I had it one big weekend, and I was just mm. not motivated to do anything. And I just knew if I'm gonna be like up and down, mm. there's no way I'm gonna be getting anything done. Bro. I need to be fully in yeah. it. And then I moved out of Melbourne, live on the Central Coast. Yeah. People from Victoria don't even know where the Central Coast is. Yeah, yeah. Just like I don't even have any friends up there. Yeah. And I just work and stay in your like you just stay focused. One guy we follow, I don't know if you've heard of him. I only I only found out about him a couple oh, fuck a few months ago. This guy's named Iman Gadzi. Yeah. He's massive on like he's 20, was 21, 22 years old. Mm. Not his business and revenue. His personal net worth is like $30 million. Like yeah. this, this kid is fucking what does mental. He do? Only fans. <laughs> Probably. Uh, so he has like an agency, he started with an agency and then a software business. But the thing that he does and he says is essentially what you've done to yourself, he has these periods of like a, a two months, three months at a time. He's monk mode. Yeah. It's like no alcohol, no all this bullshit, like limited technology, like meditating and all this stuff. And like that's where you get all your fucking, all your work done. Why not? You, like, because I've never really, been massive party but if i would go out on the weekend and like have a big night or blow off some steam like you come in the monday and like it takes you a couple days to get back into your fucking yeah, groove and then and it's the weekend again if you start again you, yeah. it's fucked Whoa. it's not good man if you really want to fucking take control sometimes that's what you got to do yeah mm. now i just live a life where I, I feel like when you're working 12 hour nights and i feel for guys that work slug it out on construction or people that go to work and get a shit boss and just like don't really like their job. But I can understand how you can easily just want to get on it every oh, weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You've had a fuck week and you need to blow out your steam. But now this is the life, man, I'm telling you. And have you had to change or like drop any friends or did you have to have conversations no, I have, with them? I just them? have no friends now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> where I live, I just don't know. I don't really yeah. know anyone, so I don't have anyone to – it's sort it, – I've isolated myself for the for this reason. Yeah. And we just – like we just work and try and yeah. get better. We go on lots of holidays, but – Yeah. Um, Would it, was anyone ever – did anyone – did you feel like you, you meet up with them? Because I, I heard you say somewhere and I'm fucking like – that's a very, very fucking powerful thought. Uh, it's like you'd, you'd go out and you'd see people that you used to party with and like that expect the old you to show up. Be oh, like, that yeah. man is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, that, did that, anyone ever fucking kind of guilt trip you for like, bro, Timmy, what are you doing? Nah, this is sort of when I was still, li still living in Melbourne. Yeah. And I f first announced I was sober. Yeah. That's when it was weird, the first few months. And I would still try and go out and be social and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they would be like – have a drink or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, it was just, it just wasn't it. I yeah. just wanted to get home to 
start talking to my little supplier, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> oh, bro. All right, let's do one more question before we wrap this wrap this up. Now, you've been in business for two years, extremely successful, bro. Fucking awesome brand. What would be one piece of advice you'd give to someone uh, wanting to start their first business? Just do it. Just, just, start. just start. Just start. I've always said it. For, like, just don't be scared to fail. That's pretty cliche, but um, it's just the truth. That's the that's my biggest thing. Don't be don't, don't be scared. Just have a crack. Yeah. And what's the what's the plan for you and front runner now? Like, what's the next five years goal or two years, one year, however far you look ahead? We're just focusing on focus on the next on the next twelve months, pretty much. We yeah. just had our big our big twelve month meeting. Yeah. And we're just really focusing now on on scaling with the team that we have. Yeah. We've we've scaled the business before we've grown. You know, we know about that. But mm-hmm. and so now we're really about and just. Leveling up the product again. There's so much more to come. And it's crazy to think like the, the team that used to just go out and party on weekends, they having 12 month meetings and setting yeah. fucking massive goals yeah, for life. It's wild. Are you, like, do you I, reflect I always, on it much? I no, think you're I always, proud of I, what I, you've I, done. I always have to remind myself that I'm the boss, eh? Sometimes. Because <laughs> if someone says to me, oh, I need to do this, it's just all good, eh? Like, yeah, yeah. If someone said, oh, I need two weeks off from doing this, I'd just yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, that's us. That's yeah, sweet, all yeah. good. Like, that. Like, it's like a chat to John. Yeah, I'm so I, I sometimes I'm like I'm not the I can't be the boss. Yeah. Everything's all good with me. Yeah, my missus gets angry at me because I'm never I, I never blow up about anything. She's yeah. like, you need to be more, you need to care more. It's like mm. I think it's not that I don't care. It's just yeah. like it's not gonna no one's gonna die from that. Yeah, like there's a balance though. Probably also at the same time makes people want to work for you even more. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I always said when I when I was working, I've had a, I've had a few good bosses over the time. I've had some shit ones too. Yeah. I always. You know what you know what a good boss is, eh? Yeah. You know how to be a good boss. Mm. It's just don't be a fucking idiot. You know, don't be rude and don't be treat people with respect. Mm. Nothing that, worse than going to work and someone just talking down to you or something like that. Like I don't need this money that much to ever be spoken to yeah. badly. Let's put people down, make people feel small, like oh. fuck that, man. I, I I hate that shit. I hate that shit a lot, bro. That's one thing I've had to learn as well. It was a challenge for me. Um, navigating the like, okay, you're the boss, but you also want to be friends with everyone. Yeah. Because I'm pretty young. It's 24. When How I many business. stuff do you have? Um, oh, we've only got like, there's six of us now, but at one point it was like 10, but like yeah, right. 10 employees, some of them 10, 15 years older than you. Yeah, right. Um, when you fucking, I don't know. I didn't have any tra- business training. I didn't, I went to uni for like two months. Like didn't know anything, and now you're telling like forty year old marketing managers like the, to get their shit in line. It's like, yeah. how do you do that, bro? Yeah, you just yeah, gotta, yeah. Sometimes you fuck it up first, and before you can do it right, but it's just part of it, man. Yeah. Um. Cool, bro. Well, thanks again for your time. Awesome. I really appreciate you. Fucking excited to now that I've connected with you. Watch your brand go to strength, to strength again, and fucking you definitely see me rocking some. Don't worry about Jeez, that. Bro. Um. So where's where's the best place for everyone to find you? Or your your brand? Oh, just Instagram. Yeah. Probably. What's your? We need to get on TikTok, eh? We're not really. Oh, uh, bro! If you get on TikTok, I've seen something. Now that I've been on your website, I'm starting to get your ads coming up. If you get people doing their little outfit transitions and shit, yeah, you'll blow you guys. Especially because you're uh, organic focus, man. Yeah, we need to get on TikTok. Just bro. find we're, someone. We're, we're on TikTok, but we we just haven't we just haven't given it the respect that it deserves. Oh, bro! Neither have I, to be honest. Like what it, what it should because we're so good at the other stuff. I'm yeah. Like you're just leaving so much on the table, so. Yeah. Yeah, and well, there's a front runner AU on, yeah, on front both. Front runner AU on Done. Insta. Done, bro. All right, thanks again, man. Awesome. Fucking awesome chat. Appreciate Cheers, you, bro. bro. Cheers, man. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do your friends a favor and share this with them, and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.